Today, we're gonna do a little crash course guide to the 2023 Tony Awards. We're talking where to watch, what to expect, overviews of nominated shows, so much more. So let's get into it. Also, if this is your first time seeing my face, hi, my name is Kat and I really like musicals. If you really like musicals, hit subscribe to join the musical theater internet cult. Not nearly as bad as the cult on Yellow Jackets. Thanks to Hungry Root for sponsoring today's video. Question of the day, what are your thoughts on the Tony Award nominations? Totally love them, totally disagree with them, totally surprised? I wanna hear all your thoughts, share in the comments down below. Worth mentioning before we get into all of this, yes, the Tony Awards are fun, yes, it's great to celebrate great work, but awards aren't everything, and art is subjective at the end of the day, so who cares? Just enjoy the show tunes, you know? Let's discuss this year's Tony Awards. It's gonna take place on Sunday, June 11th, 2023, over at the United Palace Theater for the first time ever. Similar to last year's stream, it's going to be a multi-hour, multi-platform event. The Tonys will air live on CBS and Paramount Plus at 8 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern. Paramount Plus will stream exclusive content in the hour leading up to the Tony Awards. And then you've got another live pre-show at 3.30 Pacific, 6.30 Eastern, streaming on Pluto TV's Celebrity Channel? Do you think they'll put part of it on Quibi? Long story short, CBS and Paramount Plus are how to watch the Tonys. However, there's a twist. If you haven't heard, the WGA, also known as the Writers Guild of America, has been striking to renegotiate contracts for the streaming era. The Tony Awards appealed for an exemption waiver from the WGA, but were denied. They ultimately reached a compromise where the Tony Awards can proceed just without pre-scripted segments. And I'm gonna say, the non-scripted element kind of sounds refreshing. I'm in support of the strike. The Tonys and other award shows notoriously keep cutting more and more awards from the telecast and relegating them to commercial time so that they have more time on air to do the important things like hilarious and not at all mind-numbing award show banter. I don't know what the show itself is going to look like, what they're allowed to do strike-wise, to what extent Ariana DeBose, the host, is now going to be featured, but I still think it could definitely be fun and a great time. You know, I think about Conan O'Brien during the last writer's strike just chit-chatting and spinning his wedding ring on air to fill time. And it was so good because we love Conan O'Brien and he's charming and talented on his own. So maybe the Tonys can pivot into a similar vibe. Let's talk nominees. Some Like It Hot is leading the charge with a total of 13 nominations, closely followed by Anne Juliet, Shocked, and New York, New York with nine nominations each. This is a crazy year for revivals, can I just say? Sweeney Todd versus Into the Woods versus Parade? Feels like a personal attack. Also, huge congratulations to Pasadena Playhouse for being awarded the Regional Tony Award for 2023. We've gone so many times. I've done a bunch of vlogs there. Like if you guys remember the old Pirates of Penzance vlog, Little Shop of Horrors with MJ Rodriguez, Head Over Heels, Sunday in the Park with George, so many shows. They always produce really incredible, innovative productions. And I am so stoked that they won. We've also got five brand new shows nominated for Best musical, so let's talk about them. Kimberly Akimbo is a coming of age story about teenager Kimberly learning to navigate first love, tumultuous family dynamics, and the inevitable mortality that comes with growing up. And that's magnified because Kimberly has a condition that causes her to age very rapidly. Kimberly is played by Best Actress nominee and frontrunner Victoria Clark, and the show is by Janine Tesori and David Lindsay Abair, who, fun fact, also worked on Shrek the Musical together. Oh no, I don't think I'll ever get over the idea that Janine Tesori, who did Fun Home, and David Lindsay Abair, who did Rabbit Hole, two very grounded family dramas. Like, it seems like Kimberly Akimbo would be a natural collaboration for them. And then also, there's Shrek. New York, New York is loosely based on the Martin Scorsese film of the same name, starring Robert De Niro and Liza Minnelli. Plot-wise, it's like a volatile romance between a musician and a singer in the 1940s. The production is directed and choreographed by Broadway staple Susan Stroman, so you know it's gonna have that very leggy, classic Broadway look. Luckily, if you're not in New York, New York, New York will tour North America in 2025. I almost just said New America. Before we get into the next show, let's take a moment Moment to thank today's sponsor. Hi! Today's video is sponsored by Hungry Root. It's a personalized grocery service delivered to your front door and it's the most massive time saver. I'm able to order groceries and meal plan for the whole week in 
less than an hour from my phone. Based on a quiz, Hungry Root puts together a personalized grocery cart stocked with healthy ingredients and super easy, delicious recipes. They cater to a wide variety of dietary needs and preferences, offer full-sized, fresh selections, plus they even carry snacks and pantry staples. Their barbecue sauce is so so good. For dinner tonight, we're gonna try a new recipe, oven roasted salmon with garlic, potatoes, and asparagus. I'm a big fan of Hungry Root. They've actually sponsored my channel before, so you might know about my favorite feature, as well as my ongoing obsession with their salmon. Because with Hungry Root, you can edit your weekly deliveries, pick which recipes you wanna try, and you can add grocery items a la carte, which means I have so much salmon. I'm sorry, it's so tasty, it's healthy, it takes like 10 minutes to make. We're on a salmon kick! Which is how I found this recipe, because Hungry Roots grocery orders and recipe suggestions get more personalized the more you use it. So if you wanna go check it out, Hungry Root created an incredible discount for you guys. It's the best promotion that they offer. The first 100 people who use my code CATSTEEL40 will get 40% off their first grocery order with Hungry Root. Use the link in the description box below or go to HungryRoot.com and use code CATSTEEL40 to get 40% off. Thanks again to Hungry Root for sponsoring this segment. And now, back to the video. Some Like It Hot is a musical based on a movie of the same name. If you've seen Sugar, the musical, it's also the same thing. They're just different adaptions of the same source material. But it sounds like they've updated it with a much more progressive view of gender, so... That sounds great. It's like a golden age style musical comedy where two musicians witness a mob murder and in order to escape the country, they need to hide with an all female band while disguised in drag. You have mistaken identities, hilarity ensues, there's tap dancing, Let's Be Bad from Smash is in it. <laughs> What's not to love? I couldn't find a lot of info on Shucked, so if you've seen it, please help us out in the comments below, fill in some blanks. But from what I've been able to glean, it's like a modern romantic comedy that almost kind of teases a tongue-in-cheek Oklahoma vibe. I'm a big fan of a lot of people involved. I think it's gonna be really funny and really original, so I love Alex Newell. I love of Gray Henson. I'm very excited to learn more about the show. And Juliet is a meta comedy on what would have happened if Shakespeare hadn't killed his most famous lovers and instead sent Juliet and her besties on a rebound road trip. It's a big laugh out loud jukebox musical with tons of pop hits by Britney Spears, Backstreet Boys, In Sync. You got some Kelly Clarkson in there. It seems like a really good time. So out of all of these brand new musicals, what are the critics saying? Who is the favorite to win? Well, it seems like people are pretty divided amongst Kimberly Akimbo and Juliet and some like it hot. Frankly, I could see any of them winning, but I think for very different reasons. And Juliet seems like it's a ton of fun. Kimberly Akimbo seems very unique and poignant. And some like it hot is like classic big Broadway jazz hands. They're all excellent productions in different ways. Just like a prime example of how art is subjective and can't be narrowed down into categories. Only on CBS. It's also so crazy having friends involved this year, and I'm so proud of them. My buddy Dan is in Anne Juliet. Kevin and Jason, who created Killer Party, who I did Killer Slumber Party with, if you guys were there, they're behind Shocked. And of course, Let's talk about Julia. <laughs> Sorry, I meant Tony Award nominee Julia Lester. I'm literally tearing up right now. I'm so happy for her and so proud. I already sent Julia a big mushy text, so I'm gonna try to not get too emo on the internet, but I've known Julia for a really long time, for 13 years, and we met doing a kids' community theater production of Into the Woods. Since then, we've worked on something like a dozen shows together from the summer camp to regional, and poetically, the last show we ever did was Into the Woods again. It has been so thrilling to watch her thrive. She's always been head and shoulders above, not only talent-wise, but in how she approaches the material and the moments that she finds. I'm just so elated that her work is being recognized because like, I've been telling people for years that her Little Red is Tony worthy. I'm just so thrilled that the world and the Broadway community at large got to experience her in that part. I am so proud of her. I am so stoked for her. And I think this is the first of many, many Tony Awards seasons that we'll be seeing Julia in. Papa, you wanna come join? Do you want to be with mom? I'll 
Okay, bye-bye. Now that we've shared my favorite parts, let's talk about my not-so-favorite parts. Of course, there are still many issues to work out with the Tony Awards. Although we have several non-binary nominees this year, the acting categories are still gendered. One of the stars of Anne Juliet, Justin David Sullivan, withdrew themselves from eligibility. The Tonys actually announced that they're working on finding more inclusive solutions for future award seasons. They haven't given any specifics yet, but I'm excited to see it implemented when it is. Another big issue with the Tony Awards is that it's kind of hard to get into the fun as a viewer at home. I know that they don't care about us, and it's really just one big commercial for the entire Broadway season and subsequent touring productions, but with something like the Oscars or the Emmys, it's way easier to get involved, way less barrier to entry. You can rent all of the movies that are nominated, you can binge watch a show on Netflix, but watching Tony nominated material is exclusively for those in New York during the run of the show, able to get tickets, much less able to afford them. Also, I always see this question online with a lot of confusion. A production can only get nominated for a Tony the year it opens on Broadway. So longer running shows like Hamilton or The Lion King can't get nominated again. They were eligible the year that they opened, but not anymore. Revivals can be nominated because they're an entirely new production. But I wanna hear from you. What are your thoughts? What are you looking forward to? What are you nervous about? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks again to Hungry Root for sponsoring this video. Click the link in the description box below. Use Catsteel40 to get 40% off your first box. I hope you're having a great day. I love you so so much, break a leg, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!